welcome welcome everyone to this uh, very special discussion that we are today dedicating to that section of our society which has been entertaining us it has been enthralling us and it has also been healing us very selflessly in a very difficult time that the world is going through and this has been especially of what we've seen during the lockdown when all of us were literally imprisoned in our homes and in, in different parts of the world each of us having experienced exactly the same thing here and we all turned to watching consuming tapping into different forms of art uh, and also tapping into our creative side sometime as well i'm talking here about our artists about our performers about our musicians and everyone else who's connected to this industry which today is in as much need of kickstarting mechanisms it is as much need in as much need of funds and recovery and relief packages as is in any other sector where we have seen discussions taking place in other sectors but not for the culture sector not for those connected to the arts uh, and that's why uh, the reason why we're calling this discussion is kickstarting the demand for cultural sector this is presented and organized by fiki and the world university of design with culture partner unar tv i'm seher zama and uh, thank you to all of you who uh, found time here to be here uh, to to dedicate this time of uh, a very very important brainstorming session that we will have today in finding some of those solutions let's begin by introducing the excellent names that we have with us on our panel we have Dr. Dinesh Patnaik with us, who's the Director General of the ICCR. We have Mr. Sanjay Roy with us, who's the MD of Teamwork Arts and also the Co-Chair of Fiki Creative Industries Committee. This is Shalini Pasi with us, who's the founder of Shalini Pasi Art Foundation and MASH. Mr. Tim Brinkman, who's the Chief Executive of the New Performing Arts Center in Mumbai. Mr. Roshan Abbas, who is now the president of ema so let's make a start and i'm first going to go to mr mr dinesh patnaik here who's with us uh, from the iccr uh, mr patnaik uh, we are we're aware of iccr's core strengths here which is uh, in building bridges in providing platforms in the current situation in your view on on what iccr can do today to actively create that demand to have performances back in action if not in physical spaces in if not in performances that require a lot of travel but at least kick start that demand for people to want to watch performances even on the online platform in already within existing collaborations that iccr has established across the world yeah thank you sir now this is very important question you asked me but i like come to the issue of what iccr can do Uh, one of the first thing we need to recognize is how much culture industries matter because somehow there is not a recognition of the importance of creative industries overall you know when there was a report done by ungtad some years back they found that many of the countries almost 60% of the economy actually is creative industries and not just 60% of the economy in, uh, in economic terms gdp terms but in terms of employment it's one of the largest employment generating uh, sectors in the country so in a sense kick starting the cultural economy is very important now how do you kick start the culture economy actually you kick start by starting everything else because cultural economy depends on everybody else functioning it cannot function on its own you can't kick start the economy by say, saying that okay let's start having cultural programs and people will flock to it people will only come when they are earning themselves when they have enough time to do things and then they come and then they enjoy it. but saying that there are two parts to it one part is culture plays a great socio cultural um, uh, uh, importance and the other is the economic importance right. one is that during this pandemic which none of us were ready for which we did not know what is going to happen you need culture to get you through every day because people stuck in their own homes people not doing anything you are desperate in need of something to get you out of the mon not only the monotony the depression the uh, loneliness the everything you need culture there that's one part of the socio cultural phenomenon you need to interact you need to see other things happening you need to hear music you need to hear see dance you need to see performances mm -hmm. the other side is that also has an economic impact 
right now what we are all doing is we are going online and we are going online in different ways we still haven't got it together at the end of the day when you do that how do you monetize that because you only give a kickstart to the economy if you can monetize your online activities mm -hmm. icci currently cannot do anything offline because real life events is going to take some time to go we thought shanghai cultural festival in october will probably be the first one that we will do but they also cancelled and they have moved it every single large festival in the world has been postponed except for something in cyprus which is coming up in december there are one or two other smaller ones who are braving the covid and doing it but this is just you know some offshoots there are no real big festivals is going to all happen in 2021 so real life events will all depend on whether we get a second wave of covid this uh, winter or not if there is a second wave of covid infection this winter then mm -hmm. goodbye to any real life events so what do we do in the offline online online we still need to together to work it out um and i'm glad fiki has started this because we need to see how we are doing it iccr is setting up its own platform for practical arts mm -hmm. but we are our own ott platform we're going to put in money but i was thinking it's much better if we all got together and made the platform ourselves for everybody so we'll have to see how it goes sir that's what we're looking forward to that we we also get some real workable solutions uh, in this uh, very important brainstorming session here we appreciate your views here mr patnaik uh, let me in fact because you also mentioned the work that sanjoy has done here so my next question is here for sanjoy uh, considering what uh, teamwork arts has done in 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 raising funds uh, i remember this was at the, at the at the start of april which was uh, literally just the second week of the lockdown uh and in in wanting to establish art matters and what we just saw last week was was literally walking the talk on art matters in in managing to raise funds by doing a six and a half hour online cultural event i mean it it really did feel like an event that uh, it, it was unstoppable and it also to an extent did manage to receive uh, the the exact cause that this was done for what do you think the learnings have been in the past week to that from that uh you're absolutely right sahar i mean you know some of what ambassador patnaik said sort of you know really uh, focuses on the big question how do you how do you kick start and i think that's principally the big issue our effort over these last 4 months uh, sahar and i know roshan will also talk about it is how do we sort of adapt or adopt to technology and not every art form has been able to do it as effectively visual arts it's been very easy because you know there's been now virtual galleries we ourselves did a art uh, art advocacy program around it music you can record put it on to all of these platforms but both theater and dance have found it far more difficult to be able to do it and remember at the end of the day sahar when we looking at kick starting it's also kick starting as ambassador patnaik said kick starting for whom why and where mm -hmm. if it's only for online the big million dollar question is um does everybody have bandwidth can everybody have access mm -hmm. and our belief today is that online or, or bandwidth today is the great divider so right. therefore we come back to can we open up our venues our theaters mm -hmm. our events our museums our exhibition spaces with the confidence that each venue or each space will put into effect the protocol uh, ema has sent out protocols fiki has put out protocols the government of india has set into place protocols so can we look at that and third most importantly as ambassador patnaik also talked about how do we address the economic challenge today this is an issue and it needs government's contribution yes we understand the economy is a challenge yes we understand that there non performing assets in in banks but what we don't understand is the need of the hour at minus 9.3% gdp right. contraction how can you not be putting in some input into the economy where are those policies ncpa did a fabulous survey Uh, recently about how many people does it take to get one solo performer be it a musician dancer theater person mm -hmm. on stage the ecosystem requires 33 people to get one person on stage 
those 33 jobs have disappeared. How are they feeding themselves? So it's not just about you and me and our dog named Boo, uh, but it's really about the invisible. Until we are able to help the invisible, this sector is going to find it extremely difficult uh, to kickstart itself. The event sector in Roshan will tell you about it. 10 right. million jobs in the formal economy, 9 million jobs are at risk. Just in the formal economy. Forget the tent house people, forget the people who make uh, the pandals and the flower people, etc. So it's a, it's a devastation across the, this thing. And it's a severe and serious predicament that uh, this sector is under undergoing right now. Um, absolutely, Sanjoy. Uh, you, you've put it across uh, very bluntly, and, 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 and that's how it needs to be to, to understand how uh, different connected ecosystems have entirely collapsed. And this is also in the face of a humanitarian crisis. It's not just a crisis in the arts or for common world. It's, it's at the end of the day a humanitarian crisis because someone's falling ill in these sectors. There's also a huge question of affordability of treatment to COVID-19, which is, which is getting equally more and more of a challenge with even the health infrastructure collapsing and spaces filling up. Uh, let me come to you, Shalmi, on this. Um, and this is uh, specifically pertaining also to, to your core area, of what you've been promoting and uh, uh, speaking about, which is the visual arts here. Uh, and uh, do, what do you think that the visual arts would require most now? Uh, if, if you think it's been relatively easier for online virtual art tours, uh, once again, it's, it's, it's also about uh, revenue generation, purchasing power for the artworks has become a huge issue here as well. So it is imperative that we think about various ways in which we can help kickstart our creative industry. Because of the pandemic, the art sector was relegated to a non-essential category. Mm -hmm. Hence, there was no protection offered to countless people who have worked tirelessly to build their career in the arts. As I think my co-speakers would agree, uh, going digital, making use of uh, social media platforms has aided many artists and designers in reviving their businesses during, during and post lockdown. When uh, talking about the art world, one of the ways, uh, you know, is, uh, is of course, been online exhibitions have been extremely uh, helpful. Online auctions as well. Uh, in fact, we ourselves conduct, conducted uh, two online exhibitions as well as fundraiser for mm -hmm. uh, Cyclone Amphan. And uh, also we started a podcast uh, for, uh, and that was quite a success uh, because as uh, uh, as uh, you know, earlier mentioned that uh, these kind of plat people who are not on these platforms have got on to like a podcast because there's a lot of interests. Uh. Mm -hmm. So one of the key factors that worked uh, uh, in the favor of the exhibition was a lot of people globally could view the exhibition because so much of it was put out that worldwide people could view them. Right. Uh, this actually benefited the galleries as well as, you know, there was no cost of physically putting up an exhibition or taking up a space, etc. lighting. Uh, in fact, galleries such as Delhi Art Gallery, Saffron, put up the, their, on, their uh, you know, their exhibitions online. What they displayed physically, they put it online as well. So one can also keep the public interest going via creative blogs and, you know, that discuss the artworks that is to be uh, auctioned. Mm -hmm. uh, galleries like Carnegie Art Gallery started a video blog which documented how the gallery conserve old works and how it's displayed in the gallery. Right. Uh, you know, digital, uh, coming to the digital spaces and social media have helped the fashion industry as well. Uh, so in order to uh, preserve this, many high-end fashion brands move their businesses online. In order to use the time creatively, uh, fashion brands such as Eka double their efforts in providing exclusive bespoke pieces, and each new garment was ex available ex exclusively online. Uh, brands such as H&M and Zara have already had an extensive online presence. Uh, they offered uh, heavy discounts uh, to keep the businesses afloat. Okay. One of the, uh, so one, one saw the height of out of box thinking when high end fashion brands that were due to unveil their summer collection did uh, did so via full length uh, online shows like the Chanel launched a cruise collection online as well as Dior. 
uh, the Fashion Design Council of India started a support fund to provide financial assistance to small businesses and young designers during such unprecedented times. Mm -hmm. The COVID-19 support fund is initiated by the council to aid individuals and craft people. The need for such grants is important in order to help our art and craft industry. It is important that government supports these during these difficult times. Mm -hmm. uh, NGOs such as Goodweave International or the international organizations such as the World Trade Organization also offered valued support. Okay. All these examples are indicative that the creative industry has to become more innovative in order to run their businesses securely while making sure that employees are not facing adverse uh, situations. That, that does give us uh, a couple of takeaways, uh, particularly if the FDI, FDCI fundraising has, has, has directly been reaching out to the artisan's family here. Uh, Tim, uh, my next question here to you, because uh, uh, this is regarding the new center uh, that, that you're handling. Uh, and uh, when it was conceptualized, the world was very different. And now things are very different. So, so, so perhaps the brief for the, for the center would also have to face a, a paradigm shift in, in uh, in wanting to analyze how new physical spaces such as such as yours uh, can be reoriented and being used more creatively, which is which is far more beneficial now in reaching out to a wider audience than in what would have been initially. Well, I think that's an extremely good question. Uh, what are the purposes of these buildings that we are creating and the buildings that we have? bearing in mind that uh, regulations are preventing us from utilizing them at the moment. But it takes us back, doesn't it? It makes us think fundamentally of what the purposes of these buildings are in any case. Well, what do they do? And they're there to, you know, to celebrate the, the live experience of our artists and to actually create a place where our artists and our audience can come together and meet. And I think Shalini used a really interesting word a minute ago when she talked about, uh, you know, us being relegated. Uh, we were relegated to a non-essential category. And uh, I think we've been put to the bottom of the pile and we've put to the end of the end of the queue. And the passion in the words that Sanjoy has used, I think demonstrates, I think the feelings we all have that this is extremely unfair and it's yes. not right. And I tell you why it's not right or how this pertains to the project that I'm engaged with in the moment. Uh, I was thinking a little bit about, uh, you know, in our buildings and in our issues, what can we do? Well, at the moment, we feel like a gap. And I think we ought to feel more like a possibility. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we ought to not think about the terrible economics that we're facing, where, you know, maybe the resources available are 90 percent uh, of them have gone. We ought to be thinking about what we can do uh, with what we've got. Um, you know, travel has kind of died um, and, and people aren't coming into, say, Mumbai, the numbers they were, so we come to flock to our building. So what can we do locally? What is it we can do with the people that are living around and who are here and who will be looking for things to do and looking for some genuine interactions? Right. Um, and I want to pick up on another comment that Sanjoy made, and it's the one that's really about collaboration. We really are very, very much stronger together than we are thinking about ourselves individual and our individual circumstances. And the one thing I, I want to say about my thoughts currently in the current project I'm engaged in is I think it, it's, 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 it's a, an amazing project to come and look at in itself, but actually it only has meaning if it's part of, an, of, of a, a matrix of activity, which includes our other local theatres at the NCPA, of course, and the Prithi that we all know about more widely across India, and indeed in other countries. All the other venues in the other countries are facing exactly the kind of discussion that we're having today. The other aspect I want to focus on in terms of this project is really the point of this project is to provide a contemporary focus for India and her culture, a contemporary India who has an unparalleled and amazingly rich cultural history. You know, as a foreign guy, I, you know, I, I just know that if you ask somebody, you know, tell me what is India about, within the very first breaths that somebody will utter, it will be about the culture of India. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be about, you know, the peerless dance history. It'll be about the amazing music. It'll be about the amazing influence on design and visual. Has always been, yeah. 
The soft power, exactly. And of course, the soft power is something this government has got to wake up to. It's a fantastic strength that the, the country has. And if it's going to rebuild itself from the current economic trough that we're in, then I think a small investment in what the culture has to offer will create an incredible platform for industry and business to be able to build upon. Uh, we're not on this on our own. We're not looking for handouts. What we're looking for really is being part of the collaborative game, which is about India and about presenting herself. You said, Tim, that we're not really sitting here for handouts. We're, we're, we're looking at to be, to, to, be, to be recognized as equal players who can, who can sit and contribute to the economy as much as uh, we have been doing in the past, uh, not so long ago as well. Uh, Roshan, for someone who's, uh, who's uh, sitting in the chair as president of EMA, uh, concerning the um, entertainment and events management, and that there's so many more unspoken, unseen ecosystems attached to this industry. Uh, and uh, what we have in different surveys and figures that have been analyzed so far, roughly bring about, and this is colossal, in, in roughly bringing about a loss of 90%. To the industry here of what we've seen in the past few months. Um, this is more to do with uh, everyday survival. Uh, my, my question to you is more to do regarding people who are behind stage, who are behind the scenes, who are backstage, and who've been very much dependent on uh, everyday work, everyday survival in being connected to everyday wedding industry, everyday events, everyday tourism events. Uh, how, how are we looking at working in that direction here as well? Uh, so thank you. And, uh, you know, I think Sanjoy made a couple of the points which we commonly stress about in most forums. We almost play, uh, you know, <laughs> follow up to each other in terms of those things because uh, really I think, I think it's firstly, uh, you know, at the Event Management Association, we felt one of the critical things was to let people know that we are, uh, we, as a sector, I believe one of our biggest problems is we are invisible to the past that we, uh, you know, and making us visible was so, so critical. And that is why when we put out the statistics of the 10 million people who are employed in the business, the fact that this is actually, actually a 500,000 crore sector, if you look at organized and unorganized. Um, and if you take the organized part of it, which is close to one third, uh, that's a huge amount of revenue loss. Uh, so, so the first point, I think, was to just make everybody aware that this is not just about feeling good. This is about livelihoods. Um, that was equally important. We then came out with this whole set of safety protocols, which actually we have put there over 300 pages. We have sent these to every government official. We have a government committee that is almost on a weekly basis meeting up with ministers, cultural secretaries. Uh, people who are head of directorates to make them aware that we can do safe events. In fact, our entire campaign was safe events to save events. And with that, we saw the change of 50 people as a protocol to 100 people. Though, of course, we did expect that it would go to at least 200 because Sanjoy's point is absolutely right. If somebody can sit akin to each other on an aircraft with a mask, why can they not do that? If they so choose to come out, why can they not do that in a theater? I think these are critical things to learn and we can all learn them from each other. We would be very happy. In fact, we are, we are planning to do an entire seminar next month on virtual platforms and events because we feel everybody must have one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I mean, that's something which I feel is absolutely critical to do. The, the other important thing I think is to just make people understand that in this sector, uh, there, there, are, there are people, and as Sanjoy said, that for every performer on stage, there are 33 people. There is a lot of mental health issues happening. At right. the Event Management Association, we have started a We Care helpline, which is a helpline that has been put out just so that people can call, uh, call in and speak. And, you know, the person who runs it, Poonam Lal, who's the head of our We Care initiative, when she speaks to me every week, it's heartbreaking to hear that grown-up men and women call and just cry saying at least somebody is willing to hear us. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, one, one simple thing I tell you is if you know anyone in the cultural sector, pick up the phone and give them a call. Just check in. Um, and the government does need to recognize that we are possibly 
one of the largest contributors to, as I said, both people's mental health, livelihoods, mm -hmm. growth. The last point I want to tell everybody is if you're in the culture sector and you can't perform, there is one thing that everybody is missing out on and that is teach. The number of culture practitioners that are teaching online and earning good money is humongous. And I can tell you that there are people and, and this is not about, you know, again, and I keep saying don't give things for free unless you're doing it for relevance because mm -hmm. revenue can, revenue opportunities exist. Ticket prices, if you look at the surveys that we've been part of, are going from 200 rupees at the minimum to 3,500 to 10,000 rupees. And people are paying. If you deliver value, it is also mm -hmm. a time to sometimes look at what you are as a cultural practitioner and what value you add. So I think it's a question to put the mirror to yourself and to definitely go out and tell the past that we, that we are an important, visible part of your economy. Yes. Yes, and also to put the mirror to yourself and ask these questions here yeah, and uh, to, to do what you mentioned on uh, extending to what you've said, Roshan, if I may, on, on how we can do this on a very individual level as well. Uh, people are having uh, anniversary parties and birthday parties and personal milestones over Zoom chat. And if you call in an artist and a performer, and this is what I did for, for my son's birthday just this week, called in a puppeteer, invited him to that very Zoom chat for a live performance. So if we do that family for family, for, for every individual level, we would be supporting so many of these artists, um, bringing them to our homes over the online platform. Uh, and essentially, it's, it's also the osmosis that builds beyond that. So it's, 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 it's something very specific uh, that, that you just mentioned there. And more importantly, on, on the report and the research that we're talking about, because largely people think that this tends to be very, uh, th there, is, there, is, uh, there are no figures really. You're looking at an organized sector. There's not much on record, but there is so much more. I mean, it's, it's such a falsity to claim that this is not on record. We don't have the numbers and so much of it is just presumption. And it's incredible to have these figures and for everyone to wake up that these are real people with real figures and real lives. Let's, let's go back to uh, Mr. Dinesh uh, in, in what he was saying is as far as uh, the, 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 the government to do more and for uh, corporate houses to be pitching in as well. Corporate houses, of course, are also very badly hit. Uh, but sir, and what we've seen in packages that have been announced by the government, and, and this is specifically, I'm going to touch upon the MSME sector. Uh, it's 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 relatively it's it's largely been related to loans uh, instead of immediate relief package, and that's really going round about, round round the corner and in, in providing loans instead of immediate relief. And the reason why I specifically uh, mentioned the MSME sector because uh, th there are 88 percent of the creative sector which are part of the MSME. So even if the government has managed to address that. It is still not in terms of immediate relief. It's, it's still in terms of a very painful process of qualifying for a loan and then being able to avail of it and then benefit from it and then look at eventually paying back as well once you're in a better condition. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, the, I just wanted to clarify one thing. Uh, I'm with the Ministry of External Affairs and BGICCR. We take troops abroad. So the policy of what is to be changed in India is not my mandate, even though I have an opinion on it. It's not my mandate. And I would actually be uh, putting words into my mouth uh, about issues which I should not be speaking about. But I will anyway talk about it. But the most important thing, what uh, I took away from some of the discussions, I mean, Sanjoy, I agree with him completely. And I'm glad he corrected me because the government needs to focus a lot on the cultural industries because that is where the meat of... Uh, a revival of the economy lies in. And I really want to ask Roshan to let's set up a discussion on online platform. I'm willing to put in money, large amounts of money to help everybody do a platform where all of us can perform on a regular basis. Now, I have an advantage because I take people abroad and there's a time lag, which means that you can perform here and I can take it five hours later to places somewhere else or six hours later, seven hours later. So I need an OTT platform more than I need a live platform. And an OTT platform is easier because you can, you can record your things and keep it and we can then show it on a regular basis. You know, you have shows every week, two, three, Saturday, Sunday, 
uh, Fridays, Wednesday, we can work it out. But the point is to have a channel which shows the cultural strength of India on a regular basis like any other. Like, uh, OTT platform like Netflix for the uh, classical arts or for the performing arts. So we can work together. You set it up and we will do it. Uh, that is one part of it. The other part of it is still things don't open up outside. Setting up a platform like this and having regular programs, I have the capacity to be able to pay some of the artists to perform for an international audience. Now, I cannot pay for an artist to perform for a local audience. Mm -hmm. And that local part will be somebody else taking care of it. But I can at least work this out. So let's, Roshan, uh, Sanjoy, let's set up something like this where we can actually work together to see what kind of a platform we can put in, which gives an opportunity for artists to perform. You're not going to get the kind of money that you expect, but at least something to run you by. We send uh, music, dance, uh, yoga, other teachers abroad. If we can have a setup where each person can choose his own teacher online, so I have a bank of teachers, have a Baiju for classical music and dance or whatever. Absolutely. Let's, let's do that one because that's something I'm... And then for Hindi, Sanskrit, for your languages, let's have another one because there's a world out there which is keen on getting it, but we are not able to reach out. Right now we are reaching out individually, person to person. And online gives us a platform which is superb. And it, it's, you know, one-time investment can give you a lot of returns which you cannot get otherwise. So, so let's work on all these three things. I'll just add to that, sir, if you don't mind. I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, so, so you know, um, uh, this White Hat Junior got $300 million because they're telling kids as young as five years old to learn how to code. I keep telling everybody who gives me that statistic that... <laughs> You know, Steve Jobs studied Greek classical literature and the beauty of, you know, calligraphy, which is what made the interface of Mac what it is. There was technology behind, but there was humanity in front. There was culture in front. And mm -hmm. culture can be taught. And I think it is such a big opportunity for all of us to do that. And uh, as Sanjoy says, this big divide, and it's a thing which we've discussed on a podcast together where we said that, you know, this whole divide between people who have the internet, who have access to technology. Again, we have to use that each one teach one philosophy of saying, if I know technology and you know, you're a practitioner of your art, breaking you into this and explaining it can be done. Because I think that it also requires what is, you know, most uh, apps have a UI UX person working on them. Somebody who designs interfaces. Culture needs the right interface on digital because you can't present it in a block. You have to figure out if you saw the Cirque du Soleil show that was put out free for people to watch, it was shot cinematically. It was not shot with a single theatrical eye of a person seated at one seat because that is monotonous because yeah. that doesn't have the live energy. You'll but have the to minute have you shoot yeah. exactly the minute you shoot these things. I think it's such a it's a beautiful time to bring all practitioners, event people, culture practitioners, technologists, people who understand the arts, ticketing people, people who represent culture like Ambassador Patnaya, people who represent the visual arts like Shalini, Sanjoy, who I think is really like one of our father figures out there. I think it's just important to do all this and do it together. Uh, uh, Sanjoy, uh, would, you, would you like to add to what has been shared so far? Um, uh, and also, more importantly, to not really look at this as a as a stopgap arrangement or a stopgap time, but more importantly, our learnings for today in, in taking it ahead and merging it with what we knew in the past, before, pre-COVID era. If we were to take steps to move ahead, those steps have to be prescribed for the short term because we are in the middle of the health pandemic. But in the long term, I don't think there's any going back from this new reality of the digital world. Look yes. at what the digital world has done. Yes, it is a problem. And as we talked about bandwidth, and it doesn't give you the sense of memory. It doesn't implant a memory. Going to Varanasi and seeing a performance on the ghats or going to Haridwar or, or going to Khajurao gives you a completely different experience than you, have, than you will have on Zoom or Facebook or Netflix or whatever, et cetera. Having said that, we understand that and hopefully sometime in the near future, we'll go back to that. Having said that, look at what uh, the world, the digital world has done. 
the Jaipur Literature Festival, in the front lawns of the festival, which has the largest crowds, we've, mm -hmm. the time that we had the maximum number of people sort of stuffed in was, I think, 13,393 when we had Dugupati uh, come in for a session. Uh, and that was somewhat unsafe. Here, at an average session of uh, JLF's Brave New World, you have 32,000 people. At the Meta Awards Night Sahar, which we do every year to celebrate theater, Kamani would accommodate 600 people, roughly, 656 people or whatever. When the report came in last week, we had 846,000 people engaged with theater from some part of the world. And if you look at marrying technology with creativity and design, and the breadth of what we have in our country. That is the future. And this is what I said to, at the MIT, you know, thing of uh, what are the next big ideas? I said, this is the next big idea. Just bringing together traditional knowledge with technology and design, you know, and we need to understand that in the government context. Uh, Tim, uh, once again, with respect to uh, the, 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 the space that you have and uh, what, what we also touched upon earlier, if you'd like to add to further what, uh, what our other panelists and experts have said, of, uh, of just getting down with, with, with using the space and, and, and sharing it out on the digital world, even if it's not right now possible to make do with some physical event or s some engagement physically on ground. But just to start sending out those feelers to begin with, in, in tapping the digital world. Certainly, I think this is something that we need to do together. I'm particularly minded about, uh, Aditi Mangaldas put a comment up in the chat about, um, you know, how do we do this? You know, for, when you look at all the practical issues that face a team of artists who are trying to do something together, if we can work together, so say we take a, a venue and we take with the artist and the artist creative process, and then we weave a digital aspect into that, um, we work on it together, or possibly what it is is the venue provides a resource uh, and it provides uh, you know, a, a digital interface uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a way of them communicating that. And the artist provides the, the, the creative input, the, the artists, and we pool our resources. As part of creating something for the stage, we're able to create something and then monetize that and share equitably or distribute appropriately the monetization of that over a period of time we can create digital resources we can empower that to properly represent the creative spirit of the artist and the artistry that's involved as well as providing a facility that can be used for uh, the kind of events that Roshan was describing when he was talking about digital events uh, and I think it's really it is beholden upon facilities and buildings like the one that I'm involved in to, to, to weave the, the idea of digital into, the, into, into not everything we do, because you can't do it with everything, but as much as is feasible and possible. Don't think about it as a, as a kind of separate activity. It's not a kind of discrete activity that you kind of plug in and take off as a per. You've got to think about it as part of your mission, you know, our mission to, um, to, to share the joy of the live performing arts our mission to um, bolster the understanding of the live performing arts, our mission to provide a bridge for performing artists to the rest of the world and for the rest of the world to come and engage Indian audiences in the magic of what they do. Would you like to add something here uh, and uh, in, in events pertaining particularly to the luxury sector, to the visual arts? So I think uh, like I would agree with everybody else uh, and I feel that the you know the way the industry has taken picked up to the online events and webinars etc I think this can continue along with uh, because it gives everybody a larger audience so worldwide people are able to view exhibitions shows and you know know more about different cultures and uh, from all over the world and of course we have to have uh, you know of course we have to have the physical this physical experience back because there's nothing like actually viewing an artwork in person and then being in a gallery or a museum that that never that is something that never can you know digital can never uh, take over yes. that so yeah. that is my concern and of course collaboration is so important uh, 
for different fields to come together to get more people involved. So these are the two things I think we all can focus on. And as a foundation as well, we try to do a lot of events which are you know from different fields, like we have performance artists who come in and do performances, etc. Then we also the basically we uh, launched the podcast just for this specific reason. And uh, Mr. Patnai mm -hmm. would be very happy to know that we've launched the first Indian podcast on Indian art history. And it's a series of about uh, 30, it has 30 series. And this is the first, it will be the first podcast in English and as well as we are launching it in Hindi as well. Okay. So I, I could not find anything like that. So that is something that we've been quite busy with. Mm -hmm. and so we, we plan to do lots of, you know, stuff online and for the larger right. audiences. Yeah. Okay. Thank um, you. Uh, any, any, any specific <laughs> Shahil, questions? I'm just because... Yes, one... please go ahead, sir. Yes, please. Just, uh, taking off from where Sanjay left off, one of the few things which uh, we've been working with is some people to start doing culture districts in all states. You know, culture districts are crucibles where culture can get a fillip. You know, you everybody comes together in one place. Every mm -hmm. major city in the world has a culture district. In fact, there are multiple culture districts in many cities. If we can get working with the Ministry of Culture or with uh, the Ministry of Urban Development, which is actually it's an urban development issue more than a Ministry of Culture issue, is to make it mandatory for or, or to make it uh, give some incentive for every city, capital city, major city, town in India to have a culture district. You know, a place mm -hmm. where you have cafes, uh, artists, working, um, right. painting exhibitions, uh, art gallery, you know, the whole thing. It's something uh, you see in Lodi Colony in Delhi, if you've gone to Lodi Colony ever in Delhi. Right. Uh, there are people working on it. There is an organization which is the Culture Districts Organization, which Sanjay knows very well. In fact, he introduced me if I remember correctly. But that's something which I really am keen to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, to take it on because what we need is focus on the part that every state has a cultural area where people can see things happening. And so that's Mr. Patnai, as you said, uh, uh, sorry for the interruption, but I, I was just reminded of uh, the culture cut across eight ministries. As you said, that this is something for the urban development. Now, when one really goes to the urban development, this they, they'll say this falls into tourism or this falls into something else. Uh, I think that does remain the biggest challenge if this is split across eight industries. I just wanted to clarify one we... quick thing that uh, yeah. the smart city project, 100 smart cities has a culture budget of 100 crores per city per year that's mm -hmm. supposed to be spent. Unfortunately, the city administration, till we started auditing this uh, with Pricewaterhouse, no city had spent that money till about three years ago. When we started putting pressure, uh, of course, now the money is being spent, uh, but it's being spent on, on, on statues. Uh, but uh, also in um, what, what uh, a couple of our panelists touched upon here was uh, the, the, the mental well-being of artists uh, and why it's so important. Because uh, uh, Roshan, as you said, that uh, to, to reach out to people, to just pick up the phone and talk, because uh, these are very precious minds who, who are creating something very precious for us, which will stay on forever. And uh, one needs to have a state of mind to be creating that as well, to, 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 to continue being a creator. Uh, apart from rescuing the person on a survival issue here, it's, it's also about continuing to nurture that mind that creates such brilliance. Uh, no, I, I, I agree. I think it's very important, you know, and, and again, uh, you know, if you look at the chat and what everybody is saying, there are two or three areas that seem to pop up. One, of course, is this, uh, I think Amit just put up this question saying, you know, does all culture need to adapt to virtual mediums? And uh, I don't think that's what's needed. What you need is, uh, you know, you, uh, it, it's, the, it's like a performer when they go on different stages, adapt to that stage. It's the same thing. You've, uh, the virtual world can be used for multiple things. It can be, as I said, be used for enriching people there and therefore increasing your value, creating relevance, creating revenue opportunities. They all exist. The pure heart of culture will remain, yes, in the auditoriums. I mean, I miss a concert. I miss a play. I miss all of those things. That's what everyone else. 
but for a period of time we need to adapt and in that lies the hybrid opportunity i mean i i i run a, a young uh, uh, you know cultural team uh, called commune where we where we do a lot of storytelling and we do some amount of poetry and spoken word in theater um the the uh, we would have died if we didn't know what to do on digital and mm-hmm. and you know the strange part and i really wanted to tell a lot of people that you know digital while the costs uh, uh, of are way down and yes the revenues down as well but actually the profit margins have improved so i really feel there is a need for people to come in sanjay uh, to, to to what extent do you think that um, part of this is possible to go ahead and do without the government uh, i mean of course one would continue building pressure one would continue ask for the government to hear but the government hasn't heard things on on various other sectors as well there is the hospitality industry there is the tourism industry there's so much more uh to, to what extent a lot of this can work or what we've discussed about today can work in each of our individual efforts without waiting too long for the government to do it if it's not listening it's not listening i but one has to move on and find other ways as well there are our understanding is that there are 400 million people involved in the creative industries yes ragi in the gurdwara to weaver in banaras uh, you know peep person and maheshwar to the malkham etc each of us can work individually touching and impacting a few thousand lives uh, to be able to impact and contribute to the lives of 400 million indians you have no choice but to have government take on their responsibility this is not a choice this is not oh please hamare liye ye kar do i'm sorry mm-hmm. the arts contributes to society tangibly and intangibly it is the duty of every government state or center the more successful country look at germany 3.5 billion into germany's creative industry uh, this thing as 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 helped during covid uh, look at the uk 1.7 billion and now they're turning around and saying they will have to put in more money because the creative industries contributes 18% to the uk's economy mm-hmm. and then they know that they cannot kick start it with 1.7 billion hum to ek paise bhi bhi nahi lagaye or and we and we are assuming that with a 9% contraction we're all cool no we're not all cool right people are suffering dancers yes. aren't being able to feed themselves puppeteers are begging for food we are doing a food program every week 3.2 tons of food so government must take on their responsibility they cannot shy away and say hamara aur kuch hai tough yeah balance your budgets I'm I'm sorry that I'm 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 as usual. So it's it's no, no, but it's it's, it's also required, uh, Sanjay, because of course what you're talking about the, these are these are cultural recovery funds uh, in in other European countries here, and uh, it's it's come about with also a, a movement here for culture hashtag culture recovery fund. We we've seen this happening in European countries right now. but we don't find that resonating here because of course there there's so many other citizenship issues and other issues that the country is dealing with right now here as well uh, but but tim do you, do you, do you think that this 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 could reach a stage here for india as well where there is a uh, a demand from the ground which 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 talks about a culture recovery fund which uh, which which talks about culture being as much a part of our lives in everyday living uh, there's someone who's just posted saying does csr need to be renamed cultural social responsibility i mean cultural is social and social is cultural uh, if you just looking start looking at it that way i i'm encouraged that there is the possibility that there'll be a, there'll be a ground swell about this and um, i think you know we need to be why should there be a groundswell about this and i think there's a groundswell about this because you everybody's looking for some certainty coming out of this, un- this uncertain period that we're in that's everybody and uh, we're in this along with you know lots of other sectors of society lots of all the other members of the community and uh they're all looking for things to do they're looking for stimulation they're looking for a reminder of who they are and and what is more of who you are other than your culture and 
um, the work of your artists and so on, and the, you know, which you could be so proud of. Dinesh ji, even, even something as simple as uh, having the ICCR across all its social media handles, across all its branches, just to start with something, hashtag Culture Recovery Fund India, just that, just that in itself uh, could, could create a huge discourse in this direction. Yeah, sure, I agree with you. Only thing is because I'm part of government, I can't uh, tell government from outside government. What I can do, which I promised all of you, is that whatever comes out of this when we discuss, I'll personally have a meeting with the culture minister next week. I have a meeting with, uh, we have committees on different issues. I'm going to bring this up. And especially on the culture districts, what Sanjay said, there is money available. It's not that money is not available. We just need to make sure it gets to the right place. Yes. And uh, I can assure you that I will try and look at that. And more than that, I want to talk with Roshan next week to see what we can put together. Uh, Sahar, once again, <coughs> thank you very much. And it was, um, it was wonderful listening to all the minds here. It really was. And I want to do thank a you. special thank you to Sanjay for uh, supporting today's uh, series. And I do hope, Sanjay, that we'll continue uh, to support this series because it's absolutely vital. And thank you to the World University of Design uh, for making this possible. So thank you all.